Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn about a tragic and criminal case that happened in India in 2006. This is the true crime story of Nihaye, a beautiful young woman who was forced to marry into a wealthy but brutal family, driven to the brink by violence and abuse from her cruel father-in-law. She had to find a way to escape in desperation, but her escape plan ended in a gruesome murder. Let us delve into the details of this case to better understand what happened in the small village in Bihar. The story begins with a forced marriage and ends in a tearful tragedy. Before we get into the details of the case, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Nihe was born and raised in Madhubani, Bihar, India, to a struggling farming family. She is the only daughter in her family. Nihe had to face a difficult life since childhood, lacking both material things and opportunities for development. Her family did not have the means to send their children for much schooling, so Nihe only finished secondary school and had to drop out to help her parents with farm work. Life in a small village with hard farm work trained her to be patient and tolerant, but it also deprived her of opportunities that many other girls in the city had, despite her difficult life. Nia always stood out for her beautiful appearance. Her healthy dark skin, big round eyes, and thick black hair made her the center of attention in the village by her teenage years. Nia had attracted the attention of many young men in the area. Many times, young men in the village tried to get to know her and confess their love to her. But Nihe, who was reserved and modest, did not pay much attention to such things. She always appeared reserved, avoiding attracting too much attention. However, there was one person who touched Nihei's heart, Salim, a poor boy from the same village. Salim, then 25, was a kind and hardworking young man, but his family also faced many economic difficulties. He and Nihei often met while working in the fields or when she helped her mother sell goods at the village market. Their love developed quietly, without much fuss, but was full of sincerity. They understood and shared with each other the difficulties in life the dreams left unfulfilled because of poverty. Every time they met, Selim's eyes were always full of love and the promise of a bright future. But Nihei and Selim's love could not last long. The harsh realities of life soon came between their simple yet profound love. Although Nihei and Selim loved each other, Nihei's family always lived in poverty, relying on erratic harvests to make a living year round. Nihei's parents, although loving their daughter, were forced by the pressures of poverty to think about a more stable future. In the society where they lived, marriage was not only a result of love but also a tool to improve the family's status and economic conditions. Therefore, they began to see Niehea marrying into a rich family as the only way to escape poverty. Niehe, despite understanding her family's situation, still cherished hopes for her love with Salim. But those happy days did not last long. When she was just 23 years old, Nihei's family decided to marry her off to a wealthy family in the town of Patan, near Ayabad. The decision was driven not only by the desire to provide a better life for their daughter, but also by financial pressures and the influence of village connections. The groom's family, who were wealthy and powerful, approached Nea's family with a proposal of marriage. The man Nihahea was promised to was Subash, a 20-year-old, and the only son of the family. Although the family had a lot of assets, Subash was not what Nia's family had expected. He was not smart, had a poor IQ, and often displayed foolish behavior. However, the amount of money that the groom's family promised to pay for the marriage was too much for Nihei's family to refuse. They were not only thinking about their daughter's life, but also about ensuring a more stable future for the family. The dowry, the wealth, and the promises from the groom's family overshadowed any feelings of love Nihei had for Salim. They did not think their daughter would have a happy life, but in their eyes, the happiness of the family was more important. Nihei cried a lot when she learned about her parents' decision. She felt betrayed, turned into a trading tool in the hands of adults. Her sincere love for Salim was considered insignificant in the face of cruel reality. Though Salim loved her deeply, he knew he could not fight against power and money. Their love affair, though not officially ended, 
was terminated by the irreversible decisions of Nieha's family. The night before her wedding, Nie couldn't sleep. The feelings of insecurity and the pain of leaving her beloved gnawed at her mind. The words of her parents, the looks of her neighbors and relatives, all weighed heavily on her shoulders. But nothing could make her forget the image of Salim. She knew that her life was about to take a different turn, a path she did not want to take. Tomorrow morning, she would become the wife of a man she did not love and with whom she could not even have a normal conversation. Faced with that prospect, Nihe felt she had to meet Salim one last time to end their relationship. She quietly walked out of the house in the dark, passing through the familiar village roads where she and Salim had shared so many memories. The two of them had arranged to meet in the fields where they often looked at the stars together and talked about the future. When Nihei reached the place, Salim was standing there in the quiet darkness, his eyes filled with pain, but he said nothing. They both stood in silence for a long time, not needing to say anything, because their hearts knew each other's feelings. This meeting was not only a farewell but also a goodbye to the unfinished dreams they once shared. Finally, Nie walked towards Salim, and in the silence of the field they embraced. It was no longer the sweet embrace of young lovers but one filled with pain and inevitable loss. Emotions overwhelmed them, and they both knew this was the last moment they would have together. Nehehe, with a broken heart, decided to give everything to the man she loved that night. In the middle of the deserted field, they shared a passionate night, merging both physically and emotionally. This was how Nie chose to keep something of her love before being forced into a loveless marriage. All the desires and emotions that had been suppressed for so long were released that night. After their night of passion, they lay side by side, looking up at the starry night sky, but their hearts were heavy with pain. They both knew that when dawn came, everything would be over. Nie would have to return to her new home, where she would belong to another man, Salim though in pain, knew he could not keep her. Before leaving, Nie looked deeply into Salim's eyes one last time, engraving those moments in her mind because she knew it would be the last time she could be with the person she truly loved. The wedding day was hastily arranged, and Nieha could do nothing but obey her parents' wishes, feeling helpless and heartbroken. On the day she left the village to go to her husband's house in the town of Patan, Salim came to see her off. They looked at each other in silence, neither said anything, but their eyes were filled with indescribable pain. Nihei left the village in silent tears, leaving behind the first and only love of her life. At her in-law's home, Nihei quickly learned the cruel truth about her marriage. Her husband, Subash, was actually incapable of understanding or meeting the needs of a wife. Their relationship existed in name only, a mere barter for both families to fulfill their purposes. However, the reality was much more brutal than Nihe had imagined. She gradually realized that the main reason she was married into this family was not to be Subash's wife. Nihe soon realized that her marriage was not to be Subash's wife, but to serve the lustful needs of her father-in-law, Mukesh. Mukesh, 48, was a cruel and violent man. Initially, he would often approach Nihe in a sweet manner, trying to seduce her into serving him. He used shameless words and ambiguous gestures, attempting to possess her in subtle ways. However, Nihei skillfully avoided him several times, hoping he would give up. She was afraid but tried to keep her distance, believing that if she did not react, Muksh would not dare to go further. But her escape could not last forever. Mukesh was a violent and aggressive man, accustomed to using his power to forcefully get what he wanted. When he realized that his coaxing was not working, he decided to take her by force. One night, when everyone in the house had gone to sleep, Mukesh suddenly entered her room. No longer attempting to coax her, he brutally forced himself on her. Nie tried to resist but could not escape Muksh's grip. He humiliated her, leaving her in pain and helplessness. After that night, Nia's life at her in-law's house became a living hell. Mukesh, realizing that she could no longer resist, became increasingly cruel. He was not only abusive towards Nehea, but also towards his wife, Preet. Over the years, Preet had endured oppression and violence from Mukesh, which left her fearful and hopeless. 
Preet was completely subdued under her husband's iron fist, and even though she knew about the heinous acts Mukesh had committed against Niheya, she did not dare speak up or intervene. Her silence only made Mukesh more tyrannical. Initially, Mukesh was sneaky in his attempts to take possession of Niheye, carrying out his depraved acts in the dark when no one was around. Niheye, despite being humiliated and heartbroken, tried to stay quiet, knowing no one would stand by her. However, things quickly changed when Mukesh felt no need to hide anymore. He became complacent, taking his power over Nihei as a given within the family. Mukesh started raping Nihei even when there were other people around the house. He no longer cared about the presence of family or servants. Mukesh committed these violent acts right in the living room, where everyone in the house could easily see. Even with her mother-in-law Preet, family members and servants present, no one dared to object or speak up. They were all terrified of Mukesh and endured the atrocities in silence, even though they were happening right before their eyes. Mukesh's cruelty didn't stop at abusing the AA, it extended to the fact that he did it so openly and naturally. He felt no guilt or shame for his actions. His public humiliation of Nihei in front of his family and servants became almost a way of demonstrating his power in the household, letting everyone know he could do anything without fear of opposition. Nihei lived in humiliation and despair, knowing that no one would protect her. Mukesh's actions became more frequent and public, causing her to lose all hope of escaping this hellish life. Meanwhile, her mother-in-law and the rest of the family could only stand by in fear, as if they were captives of Mukesh's tyrannical power. A smoldering rumor began to spread within the family the reason why Sobash, Mukesh's only son, had become dull-witted wasn't inborn, but due to a painful incident in the past. According to the rumors, when Sobash was a child, Mukesh, in one of his violent and abusive fits, once hit his son so hard on the head that it caused severe neurological damage. This blow was believed to have turned Subash from a normal child into someone with a low IQ, dependent on his family. Many believed that if it weren't for that fateful blow, Subash might have grown up to be a normal person. Unable to bear Mukesh's brutality and the miserable life in that house, Nihei decided to find a way to escape from the hell she was trapped in. After months of physical and mental abuse, she knew she had no one in her husband's family to turn to, not even her mother-in-law. Those around her remained silent in the face of Mukesh's brutal power. In desperation, she turned to the only person who might help her, Salim, her ex-boyfriend. Secretly and carefully, Nie wrote a letter to Salim, telling him everything she had endured and begging him to help her escape this nightmare. She no longer cared about the consequences, only wanting to be freed, no matter what the cost might be. After sending the letter, Nihei anxiously waited for Salim's response, hoping that he still cared for her, despite their lives having taken different turns. When Salim received the letter, he was heartbroken and immediately decided to help Nihei escape. They planned to meet one evening and sneak out of the house. As night fell, Nihei quietly left home for the second time in her life, heading towards Salim with the hope that this time, they could escape all the tragedies. They ran away together, dreaming of a future free from all the suffering she had endured. However, their brief moment of freedom was soon threatened. When Mukesh discovered that Nihei had disappeared, he frantically searched for her. His rage knew no bounds, and he soon visited Nihei's biological parents, harassing them and demanding the return of the dowry the family had received for Nihei's marriage. He demanded that Nia's parents return the entire dowry, issuing terrible threats if they did not comply. Nia's family, already poor, could not afford to pay back such a large sum. They were extremely worried and had no choice but to beg Nia to return to her husband's house. In desperation and helplessness, Nia was forced to return to the hellish house she had tried to escape. She knew that this decision would mean harsher punishments, but she could not put her family in danger because of her actions. When she returned to her husband's home, Mukesh became even more cruel and tyrannical. He not only physically abused her, but also forced her to serve him like an animal, 
no longer treating her as a human being. Every day, Nihei was forced to do hard and humiliating work without rest or protection of her rights. Mukesh no longer saw her as the nominal wife of his son but as a toy, a tool for satisfying his depraved needs and anger. One fateful night on March 12, 2009, after months of torture and living in despair, Nihei decided to meet Salim, her ex-boyfriend who had once tried to help her escape. She couldn't bear it any longer and knew that this time, either she would escape this hell forever, or everything would end in tragedy. Niha silently planned her escape. That night, when the whole family was asleep, she and Salim took action. Salim sneaked into the house through the back door and hid in a corner, waiting for the right moment to flee with Nihei. Both were tense and worried. While Nihei was preparing in the kitchen to escape with Salim, Mukesh suddenly appeared. He had become suspicious when he noticed her frequently missing in the evenings, and this time his animalistic nature emerged again. With his brutal and cruel demeanor, Mukesh didn't miss the opportunity to make Niahe serve him right there in the kitchen. He didn't care about the setting or situation, only about satisfying his tyrannical needs. But this time, something Mukesh didn't expect happened. Salim, witnessing the horrifying scene, could no longer control his anger and indignation. In a moment of uncontrollable rage, he grabbed a nearby stick and attacked Mukesh. The powerful blow from behind struck Mukesh squarely on the head, knocking him down on the spot. Blood poured out onto the floor, and Mukesh died instantly from the fatal blow. Both Niha and Selim panicked after realizing Mukesh was dead. They knew the situation was now beyond their control, with no way back. They decided to flee immediately, hoping to escape the police and start a new life elsewhere. However, the murder was quickly discovered. Family members and servants in the household panicked and immediately informed the police when they found Mukesh's body. The police arrived at the scene and began their investigation. It didn't take long for them to identify Nihei and Salim as the culprits. The two could not evade capture for long. The police quickly cordoned off the surrounding area and launched a manhunt. Their trail was exposed and within hours of their escape, the two were arrested. The brief escape ended with Niahe and Salim being escorted back to the police station, their eyes filled with despair and exhaustion. When arrested, both had no choice but to confess to the crime. Salim, out of love and a desire to protect Niahe, claimed that he had killed Mukesh himself, insisting that it was in a fit of rage after witnessing Niahe being tortured. Both understood they had no way out, and their fate was now in the hands of the law. After her arrest, Nihaya, mentally and physically exhausted, decided to tell the police the whole story. She could no longer bear the pain of being abused and assaulted, and in her desire to be free, she confessed everything. During her interrogation, Nihaya recounted in detail what she had been going through since entering Nukesh's house. She described the abuse, how she was treated like an object and Mukesh's cruelty in publicly humiliating her in front of his family and servants. Nehe's confession was too much for the police to ignore. They realized this was not a simple murder, but the result of a long series of brutal acts of domestic violence. The police decided to investigate further to verify Nehe's story. They immediately summoned Mukesh's entire family, including his wife Preet, other family members, and servants who had witnessed Mukesh's atrocities to clarify the matter. During the interrogation, many family members and servants admitted that they had witnessed Mukesh's harassment and abuse of Nihei. However, they had remained silent out of fear of his violent nature. The servants even stated they had seen Mukesh humiliating Nihei multiple times in the house, sometimes even in front of them, but no one dared to intervene. Mukesh's wife, Preet, also confirmed that she was aware of her husband's abuse of Nia. The trial took place on September 25, 2009. At the trial, the entire incident was reenacted before the court. Nia's defense attorneys emphasized the brutal conditions she endured while living under Muksha's abuse. They argued that she was a victim of long-term abuse and that her actions were motivated by desperation. 
Salim, who directly killed Mukesh, admitted to his crime. He explained that his action was not premeditated murder but a knee-jerk reaction as he could not bear to see his loved one being tortured. After hearing the defense, the court decided to give Salim a lighter sentence. He was sentenced to 12 years in prison for murder. As for Nehe, although the court acknowledged that she was a victim of abuse because she was complicit in hiding and helping Salim escape, she was sentenced to five years in prison. Neha's sentence was lighter than Salim's because of the trauma she had endured and the harsh circumstances she had been forced into. Neha and Salim's cases were closed, but the tragedy surrounding their lives still left a deep, haunting impression. Neha, an innocent young girl forced to marry into a brutal family, had to endure painful days of abuse and violence. Salim's act of killing Mukesh, though the result of anger and despair, cannot erase the trauma both have suffered. Although the verdict has been delivered, this story is more than just a legal punishment. It is a reminder of the tragedies that occur when people are pushed into a corner, when injustice, violence, and despair go unacknowledged and unaddressed. What Nieha went through is proof that society needs to pay more attention to protecting victims of domestic violence who have no voice in their own homes. Nihe and Salim both paid for their actions, but the real tragedy lies not in the crimes they committed, but in the trauma they endured and the oppression they could not escape. The case may be over, but the pain, loss, and irreversible consequences will remain. After following this case, do you think there are many women in India who are living in similar circumstances, suffering violence and oppression without a voice? Share your thoughts with everyone in the comments section.